Okay, to start off with our lab, we need to set up our fabric interconnects in order for them to first form a cluster. Additionally, then we will step over that phase and move into configuring the ports to connect to our server blades. Uh, we want to connect to our Nexus switches. We want to be able to connect to our SAN environment. And uh, I'll discuss all the port numbers and how everything interconnects uh, probably in part two when we go and set up the UCS. But in part one of this video, we want to erase our configuration on our fabric interconnect a and B sites, we then want to wait for the reboots to take place and run through the configuration wizard. So I've pre-opened up the left and right, so the A and the B sites. First thing we want to do is erase our configuration. So in order to do that, we need to get into the local management interface. So connect to local management. From there, we say we'd like to erase our configuration. And yes, we are sure. On the B side, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to say, I'd like to connect to the local management. And I'd like to erase the configuration. Confirm that as well. And we'll wait approximately seven to 10 minutes for the reboot to take place, which I won't bore you with. So I'll jump 10 minutes into the future and our reboot is complete. So. After the reboot, it asks us how we wish to go and configure our interconnect. We're going to do this via console. It says, are we wishing to do a fresh setup or is this going to be a restoration? It is a fresh setup that we're doing. We are setting up a new fabric interconnect. We don't want to use uh, strong passwords for something like a lab environment, but certainly for a live environment, you would wish to do so. So I'm going to say no to the strong passwords and then just set up a very basic password for, for the purposes of the demonstration. Um, is the fabric interconnect part of a cluster? Yes, it will be. So we're going to be setting up these two um, devices to connect with each other. So when you say it is part of it, it's asking you which side are you going to be? Are you going to be the A side or the B side? The, the left is the, the A side. It asks us for a name, we're going to call it UCS. It then asks us what IP address we would like it to have as our primary IP address, the physical IP address of the A side. So I'm setting that up as 101. I define the subnet mask that it's going to use. I specify the default gateway. The cluster's IP address is the IP address that will be shared between both sides, like the virtual IP address for the cluster itself. We'll set that up as 100. I don't want to set up any DNS parameters. I don't want to define a domain name at this point, And I don't want to join a centralized management environment. That point, it shows me a summary of uh, what we've selected during the wizard. Asks us if we wish to apply and save the configuration. We would like to do that. It takes a, a few moments for it to go through this phase. So I've jumped another minute into the future where it's now complete. Asks us to log in, which we could then do. And ideally what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the A side to give me an error message about the fact it cannot contact the B side. B side is not configured. We haven't done anything. All I'm waiting for is to make sure that, that probe has been done and that it's actually tried to communicate with the right hand side. Um, once I'm aware that the, the A side has tried to connect to the B, the principle would be that the B has identified the A side so we can proceed with the configuration on the B side. And there it is. So error messages come up telling us that it is unable to communicate with a B. That's perfect. On the B side, I can now go and say I wish to configure this via console. It will then tell me I have detected that there is a presence of a peer fabric interconnect. Do you wish to join that cluster? I would like to join that cluster. It's asking me for the password. So it is able to go and connect to the A side download its configuration, find out what the cluster is set to. This only takes a few moments and there you can see it's told us it's finished retrieving the config. It'll then display to me what the config is. So I can see the IP address is 101 for the left hand side, the subnet mask and the cluster's IP address as well. It then prompts me to give the IP address for the B side, which we'll set up as 102 in this case. Asks us if we're happy with all of our settings. We say yes, we are, and it goes and applies the configuration.
So that's the, the setup for the actual uh, UCS in terms of the fabric interconnects, getting them up and running, setting up the cluster themselves. In the next part of this demonstration, we're then going to jump into the UCS and from the UCS, we'll set up the ports uh, in order to configure our server ports, uplink ports, um, also being able to connect to our storage environment as well. While you're here, you can also go and do a, a show cluster state. This is to verify or see if the cluster state is currently there. What we're looking at at this point is to see if the A side and B side are up. It's currently not on the B side. We need to give it a little bit of time, do the show cluster again, um, do a few refreshes on this and eventually it will show through that the up there it is. The upside is the subordinates. It will tell you that there is no device connected to this fabric. Physically there is, there is the chassis, but we haven't set up the ports yet that go down to that chassis. So it's unable to discover it. So that HA not ready will not change until we go and set up the ports to go to the UCS and get that established, which we'll do in part two.